Okay. So if I look at knowledge, and I know Medora said, well, you know, everyone will be teaching on it. For me, knowledge starts with identity. Hmm. And if you don't know who you are in him, you will not know anything else. Everything else will be rooted on a false foundation and a false belief system. Hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, you sir, I'm like, what? Can, can you go back to your, your slide of... Um, yes, 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 yes. I'm like, okay. Then the nutrition part of it, I'll I look at it. Yeah, I look at the nutrition side. And for me, a lot of what I do and is from a spiritual standpoint, um, I understand the natural of, of, of stuff as well. But just as we eat natural things, what are we eating spiritually? Hmm. Because what you expose yourself to begins the cycle of where you end up with manifestation and your destination. So in that sense, if I look, if I break it down there from a nutritional standpoint, and I put it in air quotations, what you expose yourself to, what you feed your spirit to is eventually where you're going to end up. And sometimes people don't see the correlation in, you know, it might be, a, some, it could be simple as a song or something you're watching or the environment that you're around with people. If you are being fed those things and you're ingesting them spiritually and you're allowing yourself to take those in, eventually you're going to end up at a destination you don't want to be at. Mm. Um, exercise part, same thing. You you know, we do the physical and you don't always have to be in a gym. I get that. But are you also exercising your mind? Are you exercising your belief system? Are you exercising these things? And the exercise and the knowledge, I can kind of to, um, put them together in the sense of he, when he says in Romans 12 and two, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. If we're not constantly doing something, we're not going to better or strengthen that muscle. The water, I, you know, I think that's almost self-explanatory in this, you know, without it, you don't have it. Um, but what I love about the water too is when I, for myself personally, when I had asked God to have an encounter with him and he said to me, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Okay. And I, you know, and I understood what he meant, but I did not understand what he meant. Mm at the time when he said it, because I never thought that where I am now in my life is where I would be in my life. Right. I, would, I never thought that I would be a source of water to the masses of people that would bring forth change and transformation for them. Yeah. The sunlight, um, in the natural aspect of it, we need the sun, you know, the, the greater and the lesser light. But I also, you know, there's nutrients that come in the sun. Mm -hmm. And without that, a lot of people suffer from seasonal depression because the nutrients, the vitamin D and those things, they're not getting. And I can testify, I'm one of those people. Like, I hate winter with a passion. I promise you, you start throwing snow out. Look, I'm, I'm trying to be out. <laughs> The, you know, the, redu the reduction in the amount of sunlight in the day affects people drastically. Now, if we look at that in the natural, but then we turn that to the spiritual, the reduction of Christ in your life, you will only be walking in darkness. And how can you see yourself through unless you have that light? Temperance, the self-control, we all have access and ability, and it all comes down to choice. And a lot of times, you know, we'll say, well, I can't, that's just me. No, you, we all can. It's what we choose to do with it. And if we don't exercise it and we, we you know, if we don't exercise it, we're never going to walk in the temperance. The air, without air, basically we all said it, without air, we die. Plain and simple. You need air to live. The rest, um, for me, I understand the natural aspect of rest, but also in rest, I look at rest. In the, in the spiritual as one of the formest, or sorry, one of the highest forms of trusting and faith in God. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at Genesis and God created everything in six days, on the seventh, so all of the, the, the six days, he said it was evening and it was morning and he went on to the next day. On the seventh day, 
when we go into scripture and we see that he does not say that it was it was the seventh day it was morning it was night he entered into an eternal rest everything was finished and at that point he was able to sit back and say it you know he said it it was good everything was good every every day he did it it was good the, now if we understand what rest is if we can move into him and we say, you know what, Lord, I may not have it all together. I may not understand all things, but according to the finished works of the cross, it is done. Mm -hmm. I can now say, I already know whatever you said is finished. I'm going to trust you. Trusting God. Now, you see here that for me, the two correlate together. They, they cor there's correlation together with yes. trust and rest. Yes. And when we understand that, we can say, you know what? I may not see God. I may not, but he said, blessed are those who have not, not seen, seen and mm. yet believe. Come on now. I don't need to see God because I've had an encounter and an experience with God that solidifies my trust. And because of that, I can then rest in knowing that all things will come to pass for me. Mm -hmm. So that's my knowledge, my um, breakdown of the we, nine. We're going to be teaching um, I like it. about yes, yourself right. because first, yes, right. that was natural, then that was just spiritual. Um, that that it, it, God just knew what He was doing when He did that because people try to have a natural understanding. They don't get this. They don't get the supernatural sometimes at all until you explain it to them naturally. So we uh, week one involves getting to know yourself medically and interpersonally. So, I mean, are you a procrastinator? You know what I'm saying? Um, do, you lay, do you lay down in bed to eat? That is a big problem, especially with people with self-image problems. You understand what I'm saying? You got a self-image problem when you exercise and you wonder why you can't, you, you still got the belly, but you know, you, everything else is defined. Well, you lay down and eat. You know, people got to get, got to, get to know themselves. Nutrition-wise, um, in order to transfer, tra to um, get into this lifestyle from the standard American diet um, on, into God's diet plan, um, there, there needs to be a transference taking place. So that's what I teach. I teach how to transfer into these foods. I, treat, I teach how to uh, use food desert items instead of throwing them away because we are sustainable. You can take the nasty behind uh, peas that come in a can <laughs> and squish them down into a... Um, into like a paste and add a little bit of green dye to it and dye and teach kids how to tie dye shirts and stuff and just with a little bit of dye you have a lot of the green pea stuff and it accelerates the color and and you know do a lot of fun you can make chalk and stuff that's biodegradable different stuff exercise um we want to teach exercise to the people there's different types of exercises we can do we can do physical exercises and we can do mental exercises what's your mental exercise every night reading the word of god before i go to bed i have a goal of reading at least one one book and you know some people try to play around and read micah or read jude and what, what and you know what happened to me just might happen to them same thing that happened to shirley sees and that spirit will come upon you and that jude will tear you up so then we have water. Water um, in the natural is um, water in the natural is H2O. Nothing can seem to stop this for us. So then it's um, it's it's um, it's represented in the spirit um, as either fire or water. The spirit of God is either fire or water. And what can stop what can stop those two elements? One or the other. And um, Water can stop fire, but water, nothing can stop the spirit of God. And so those, those are the things that, that are connected to it. So when we talk about water, we want to talk about how it hydrates the body in the natural sense and how it hydrates the body in the spiritual sense. Then we have sunlight. First, that which is natural. You need sunlight. People seem to think that on a, that they need to get into light things in order to get darker or whatever, I, I guess, you know, and it's not just a white people thing. People are either getting darker or lighter. I don't know what people are going through, but um, there is, you can, you can receive benefits from the sunlight, rather you're getting um, radiant heat, which is direct sunlight, or rather on a sun cloudy day, sunlight is still hitting you. If, if there's light outside, you're still getting light. Um, and then we have the sunlight, the light that Yeshua uh, gives us, which is our gospel, that living water that was talked about um, with, the, with the woman at the well. She never heard nothing like this. This dude knew everything about her. And she went and told everybody else. And then they one day, they didn't even need her no more because they had living, they had living water. And so um, the light of Yeshua brings the living water to life that is in, that is in us. And then not only that, it's sonship. Can you walk in the character of Christ? 
everyone can. They just don't believe they can. So that's that. That's what we have to do is excavate sunlight and S U N and S O N up out of people. Then we have temperance. Fast and cool. I'm gonna move past that. Okay, and then we have air. <laughs> I, I just don't want, I don't like to change. I don't want to pity pat it. It's fasting and prayer. We still need it. It's relevant in the story. That's for me. Not Maybe not for y'all. For what, temperance? Yeah. I was like, where, where? <laughs> okay. I was like, where are we? What are we? <laughs> you have moved so quick. I'm like, well, what that, it's being recorded. It's being recorded. I, was, <laughs> I, I wouldn't do y'all like that. <laughs> And then we have air. Air is the breath of God. Air in the natural is something that none of us can live without. All living organisms, all living organisms need some form of air. I believe it's all living organisms. There's no organism that can live without air. Actually, there, there well, are. Well, no, there's carbon they live by carbon monoxide too, right? Yeah, there are organisms that can just breathe carbon monoxide, but the ones that live on carbon monoxide, they extrude oxygen, which okay. we need. So there is a symbi. Uh, yeah. Symbi so either way, either you're taking in oxygen or you breathing out oxygen. Okay. And so then, air, you're going to get it either way. But go ahead. All right. And then we have the rest of God. Um, the rest, um, physically, we need rest. Why? Because, you know, it keeps us from having attitudes. It keeps our vision clear, blah, 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 in the natural in the spirit, we need the rest because when we're calmed down, and people get it misunderstood that to be still and let God be God means shut up, let him talk. Because a lot of times, all the voices we hear our bosses, we hear our children, we hear us, we hear Satan, you know. But if we be still, the, the we are the sheep that know his voice. And so then we get the best of God, the downloads, the thought that and, and, um, and, and um, whatever happened throughout the week. When we wrote that down and we was praying about it now we're sitting down i mean we're not just resting like overnight going to sleep to get up to go to work we resting in him fully and so we now we get our answers and that um that's a lot of time things are uh deliverance happens then um salvation happens then answers happen there in the rest of god then trust one of the hardest things for people to do because he's an invisible god first that which is natural he said Okay, I want you to assemble with the saints. People cannot get around going to church. Now, rather you want to call it church, rather you want to call it getting together in your living room and talking about Jesus, it's up to you. Tomato, tomato. But we have to have to get together. He said, you can't see him. So how are you going to trust him that you can't see when this brother right here that's been doing for you, you always talking about him, you always got something with him. But he a human just like you. And you got something with you. You know you got issues, but you want to trust me. So we got to teach people how to trust and tr trust people to trust, to know that people are going to be themselves, that they're human beings, that they are not the omnipotent woman that we strive to be. Doing it, we're doing it from an African holistic approach. 
Africans and others have, you know, we know the Bible says that, you know, the first people were in Africa and all that. So this is a culture that has been passed on for decades and millennium. But the Western world is in total against that. And so that's what, why the nine laws of health are being re-implemented in our Western world. That's a lot to download all at one time. I, I Medora, okay. I don't want to mispronounce your name. Your name is Afia. Effia. Effia. Okay. Effia. The East Island. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I I'm gonna work on that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that, but. Um, I don't know how long you've been uh, knowing Medora. Medora gives you a lot to download all <laughs> at once. Mm -hmm. I saw you. It, it's it's just your personality, Medora. You did that's just who you are. Um, but I'm only going to touch on a few points, and then I would like to hear um, Sister Effius, right? Just we'll, we'll just work on it. Well, okay. <laughs> I knew. You I close. Knew. You close. Uh, okay. okay. I'm in. I'm in the ballpark. All right. All right. Okay. So, I'm just gonna touch on a, a a few points, and I think it it one overlaps the other. Er, er, either way you look at it, and and what I do, um, sunlight is very important for you know, the plants to photosynthesize and take the nutrients that they get from the sun to put it into their roots so the roots can get stronger, so they the roots can feed the microbiome and all the creatures that live under the ground to make the plant bigger and stronger so we can eventually eat it. I mean, water, the same thing, the water, you know, again, uh, they use the water to help themselves grow, and, and it's just a cycle, and th and that's the way I'm seeing it. Everything that has to do what, and, and maybe you know, I'm just this is the way I just think. I don't know, but everything's a cycle when it when it comes to the nine laws of health is is what I'm looking because mm -hmm. the way I see it is I deal with seeds, and when you put a seed in the ground, you can't see it. So you got to have faith and trust that something's going to happen when you put that seed in the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, the seed in the ground takes in carbon monoxide but releases oxygen, air, mm -hmm. right? I spoke about the sunlight. I spoke about the water. Now, the knowledge, you have to have the knowledge in order to have the seed germinate in the for in the right situation, so to speak, in order for that plant to grow, live, and thrive. No one's gonna um, teach our knowledge because knowledge goes with everything. So everybody's gonna teach our knowledge because it's I, four of us and it's nine laws. So that means we can pick two laws to concentrate on. But I feel what you're saying about the flow. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it just and it just all flows together for me and how I and and how. You know, I see, or not even really how I see, how God showed me what what I do, what it really means. Mm -hmm. We take so many things for granted when the skill that I have, not a lot of people have it these days. There are still farmers out there, but they're getting old, and they're not passing down that knowledge to their children because their children is moving away, going to college, doing other things. So they have nobody to pass that knowledge down to unless one of their grandkids come and, you know, want to get that knowledge. And usually they don't. Right. Back in the day in, 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 um, in World War II, everybody had a victory garden. Everybody knew how to grow food. And that knowledge has almost disappeared in less than 100 years. So it's important for us to learn these things because all of these things that 
may sound really superficial at the surface, really power our lives as a whole. Because you can't live without nutrition. You can't take care of yourself without the knowledge to do so. If you don't have water in three days, you're going to die. If you don't have food in 40 days, you're going to die. If you don't have air in three minutes, you're going to die. If you don't sleep enough, you don't rest yourself, you get delirious, and then you die. You, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but that, that's what it is. That's how you're saying it. Go ahead. I mean, that's, I mean oh. sister, I mean, you can jump in and at any time. I would like to hear your thoughts on any of this, you know, so I could get to know um, exactly who you are.